Hi, this is Jack and Ash from Fitness Lab. And what we're going to take you through today is the kind of progression and method of progressing from not squatting at all, all the way up to being able to back squat. It's something that people always want to get to work towards. And so what we're going to take you through today is kind of the, what you need to use and how to do it to get there. Um, now, when most people come to us, they might not have ever squatted before. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just simply get them to squat and see what's happening. So I'm going to use Ash now, and I'm going to go side on, and he's going to go side on to you. And we're just going to ask him to squat, see if there are any things that we can fix straight away. So if we ask Ash to do a few squats, as we can see, this is a pretty good squat, right? His knees are able to travel over his toes and his back and spine is upright. This is pretty good. This is pretty much perfect and what we would look for. But sometimes there can be classic issues, such as when people squat, their heels raise. And if they then squat, their also their upper body can lean forwards and come forwards like that. So this is telling us a couple of things. If you're doing this at home, I'd recommend you have a go, see what happens when you squat. If you have something like your heels raise, all that normally means is that the ankle mobility is limited. So what we can do is basically formulate or simulate better ankle mobility. And we can do that in a couple of ways. You can either grab a couple of 1.25 small weight plates, or if your gym does have access, you can grab actual heel raise plates. So to, to use these, all you have to do is space them at a distance that's right for your squat and mobility. And what this is going to do, if we use Ash to demonstrate, he's going to just place his heels on the heel raise and then he's going to just point his toes out slightly, about 10 and 2 o'clock, okay? And then what this will allow him to do, even though he was brilliant before with his actual squat, when he squats, he's able to probably get deeper than he was before and then also keep his upper body in a nice upright position and allow his knees to travel over his toes more. So if when you test yourself at home and your squat has those couple of deficiencies, this is where we would recommend you start. Raise your heels and then also use a counterweight. So I'm going to ask Ash to hold this out in front of him about 45 degrees just above his face. What this is going to do is just further allow him to stay upright and just <laughs> the balance against the weight of his body going back. So if we call this level one, that's where you should start. And you wanna to get to around being able to perfectly complete 20 reps for three to four sets. If that all goes well and you're happy with that, we can then move on to a goblet squat. So for that, I will grab a dumbbell. And this is the nice, easy next progression from the counterweight. So if I ask Ash to hold the dumbbell around the end against his chest. Now you see, this is very similar to the counterweight in that the weight is in front of him. There's no reason that you have to get rid of the heel raise ramps. If that's working for you, use it. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Work on your ankle mobility around that to improve it because that's just good for general health, but you don't have to get rid of it straight away. Now the dumbbell's acting as a counterweight, it's in front of our body, it's a nice easy position to hold. The movement is exactly the same. So as he comes down, he's still going to have that upright body position, his knees are still going to travel over his toes, and then when he pushes up, he's pushing through his whole foot, so big toe, little toe, and heel. This is the goblet squat. Aim to get here, and don't rush this section, because a lot of people can do it with a lightweight six kilograms and then think, okay, great, I can now progress to the next level. There's so much more you can get out of this goblet squat. So for example, if I test Ash now and grab a heavier dumbbell. Most common barbells weigh around 20 kilograms. You can still get to heavier than that with a 30 kilogram dumbbell. And this is still gonna build the strength that you want and get you the results that you want. If you get to around doing half of your body weight in a goblet squat for 10 reps, three to four sets, once you get to that point, then you can start thinking about progressing to potentially a barbell squat or further a safety bar squat. That's a good metric that we like to use. Now, for barbell squatting, 
we've got a couple of options here of how to progress. If you are happy with your depth and your positioning and also your technique, we can work either towards a full front squat or we can do a front squat to a bench or a box. What this is going to allow you to do is limit your depth so you don't have to go as low and it gives you just an external guide to focus on. So for the front squat, what we're looking for, again, we're keeping the weight front loaded. So you see how it progresses from being here to here to here. The weight is still in front of us, allowing us to keep our upper body upright. So what I'm gonna do with Ash is ask him to put his thumb on the line of the barbell where it goes rough to smooth. That's where you set your hands up for distance. Then, with a loose grip, he's going to wrap his elbows underneath the bar. So in this setup position, I'm gonna hold him here because this is perfect. As you can see, his elbows are high. You wanna have your elbows as high as you can. And if we look here at his hands, he's not gripping the bar with a full grip. He's just got it nestled in his fingers for stability. A lot of the bar weight and where it's held is across his shoulders. Now, if you find this position is too hard and you can't get in there, there is an alternative where if I ask Ash to just do the simple cross handover position, you can see the barbell is still in the same position on the shoulders. We've just got a different hand grip, exactly the same. So if option one doesn't work for you, you can try option two. Go with whichever one you prefer to use. Okay, so from here, we're gonna talk you through the box squat first of all, because it's kind of an intermediary before the full front squat. We're gonna stand up from this position braced, take a couple of steps back to line up with the bench. We're gonna have our feet either side. Now, we know the squat technique is good from all the work we've done before, so you just perform the same movement, but now down to the box. So that external guide allows you to come down. You find the box. What you don't want to do is collapse. And if I ask Ash to exaggerate that, exactly. So here he's collapsed down, he's relaxed. There's no tension through his body. That's not what you want. That's how you're going to get injured. What we want, if we start from the beginning, is control down under tension. We keep that tension. We find the box. We sit, but we're still braced. And then from there, we push the ground away and stand up to the start. If we don't want to use the box or a bench, and we just simply use the full normal front squat. Everything else is the same. We're going to lower to a depth that's appropriate for us and our ability, and then we drive through the floor, pushing it away to stand upright. The whole time, we want Ash to have his elbows being forced upwards, head looking up and forwards as well, just to keep everything in line. If you do a couple more reps for me, there, push the whole world away, and this is the front squat. Okay, this is the nice progression from goblet to be using a barbell. What I'd recommend here is start with the bar because that positioning is quite different to being here with a dumbbell in the goblet squat. So get used to that and then slowly add weight and kind of build up again. Find a weight that's challenging for your rep scheme and build up there. When you've finished your sets and reps with the front squat, you just walk forwards into the rack, make sure both sides are in and then it's a little quarter squat down and release your grip. Okay, next, after that, once you've mastered this and you've achieved a good weight and you want to try back squatting, there's no real pinnacle point you have to get to with front squat with weight. You can progress that and use that as a main exercise for as long as you want. If, however, you just want to go to a back squat, potentially lift a bit heavier because the lift allows that, you can then add that into your sessions. So the setup for the back squat, we're again going to go thumb on the line of rough to smooth on the bar. Instead of coming under and having the bar now on the front of us, this is where the different challenge comes in, is that the weight of the bar is going to be on our back. So Ash is going to come underneath the bar and we're doing a high bar back squat. This is going to set up on the highest part of our shoulders, not on our neck. That's where you're going to find a lot of uncomfortable pain if the bar is resting on your neck. So on his upper traps here, full grip of his wrists here and elbows down and locked in. From underneath the bar, he's going to stand up, step away from the bar and 
perform the squat as he has done for all the others. So we could use, again, a bench to come in and do a box squat, bench squat style, or we can go full back squat. So full back squat, all the technique positions and point are the same. Upright spine position, knees travel over the toes, full foot flat on the floor, push through the big toe, little toe and heels, and we drive straight back up. See how he keeps his elbows locked underneath him? Something you might see is elbows being flared backwards and out and away. Try and avoid this because this just keeps tension through your upper back where the weight is. For this, again, because it's the last stages of the squat, there's no real, you have to achieve this and that's when you stop. This is something, if you're there and you're happy to use in your programming, you can keep doing and get as strong as you like with that movement. To rack the bar, all he's gonna do is walk towards the rack, make sure both sides are lined up, and we drop it in. And that's, in a nutshell, going from zero to full back squat from start to finish, using a system that we like to use here at Fitness Lab.